Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's episode of uh, Tales from the Audience. And no guesses that that is you guys, the audience, the listeners, the partakers of this channel. As this is the second episode of this, we actually have content this week. First, I'll do the story, and then afterwards, I'll do the draw for this week's dice. But this week, we have a special twist, because there'll be two types of word prompts, not just dice. Stay tuned to find out. I'd quickly like to thank the following Tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon, thank you very much. For all of those that took part in this event, thank you very much for submitting your stories. They were all enjoyable. Hopefully you'll give it a go this week as well. But the winner is a story called I Cannot Believe My President is a Lizard, written by Rulian. Using the dice, invisibility, press, livestock, velociraptor thing, and home. We destroyed our homo. We destroyed the magnetosphere of the fourth planet of our system after fleeing our homeworld, and we didn't find another system with the ability to harboring life. It always has some problem. No water, so to cycle too long or too short. No magnetosphere. Gravity slightly over our threshold, more under it. Well, that honestly was a lie. We found three worlds close enough to our homeworld conditions that we were able to terraform, and so we did. But once and again, our industrialization of planets brought them to a collapse, to the little ecosystem that we could bring out with ourselves in our travel. In the last one, we realized that with the extinction of our last carnivore, we would no longer be able to terraform another planet as the species that we had left were not enough to maintain a closed circle, and without heavy machinery and intervention, our livestock was condemned to collapse. We were doomed to roam the galaxy with our ships until the final collapse decided to wipe us out for good this time. So then, we decided to do a very risky move. A last travel. Back to home. When I said we, I mean our ancestors, obviously. Faster than light travel would be impossible without curving space. And the energy needed to curb enough space to allow one ship to travel is superior to the energy emitted by some stars. That means that faster than light travel is, uh, with the exception of subatomic particles which we use for communication, impossible. It had been several million years since our people started our exodus to the stars. And our scientists said, that in that time, it was possible that life could have resurrected in our own world. I, Slobargnara, was the head of our people, and we entered back from the Farnet system. And also, I was the first one to cry joy after seeing our home planet covered again in green colors. Although it was a lot different from our archives, as tectonic movement had transformed completely its landscape. But not everything was good news. Never was. We detected alien spacecraft orbiting our planet. Not only life had resurfaced, another sentient life form had evolved. Luckily for us, the spacecraft was rudimentary, so they were starting their space industry. When the scientists came with the results of the orbital scans, it couldn't seem more of a joke. Mammals! The rodents that were marked as pests on our archives that we didn't even bother bringing a sample with us because they barely had enough meat for a meal and were too difficult to catch to justify the effort if there was any outbreak in the farms. Not only that, every animal was ugly as they had fur instead of a beautiful plumage. These ones were extra ugly as they only have fur in some parts of their body, like they were losing it due to some illness. Anyways... We started to get every piece of communication we could get our hands on, as a way to get to know their culture. And more importantly, to get back our planet. At least we didn't have to worry about conceding ourselves, as our radiation plating technology made us invisible to any electromagnetic radiation-based observation equipment. Unless they were specifically looking for us and knew where to look. 
As the propulsion was chemical, we were pretty sure that they did not have gravimetric space radars, so we were, in fact, invisible. First, as there were little to no satellites in orbit, the data we could get was very low, but the volume was increasing exponentially over the years. While the linguistic team was busy deciphering their culture, our cybernetic engineers were making drones decide to look exactly as one of the members of their society. Others were busy mining asteroids now that we'd entered another system and could get more materials, always coordinating with the military so that they would mine asteroids that would not delate our position. Asteroids located in the outer bow, and only when the natives' telescopes were looking in another direction. Slowly but steadily, we were getting more intel from the enemy. First, some meaningless information, like the name of their system, Sol. Firstly, I preferred a lot Barnet, but opinions on this topic differed one to another. Or they had found fossils of our people and were using our graveyards as power source. Recycling our bodies was the norm as we lived on an enclosed system. But it was disgusting thinking that another species was profaning our ancestors' tubes. But soon we discovered that the two major imperiums in our planet were in war. And not only that, they were threatening each other with atomic arsenals. I made them corroborate that information twice. Not only an atomic fallout would make it impossible to terraform the planet, but it was unthinkable that they managed to split the atom before they managed to get a stable orbit. We usually take our time to make things right, and if it was not by this information, we probably would learn their language today. But after hearing that, I personally restructured our economy to ensure that we could finish our translations before they nuked each other. So after barely 20 years of listening, we learned enough to make a possible infiltration. That day, we landed two drones with the face of each Imperium leader. The cultural team makes me a point that they were nations, not Imperiums, as they had no emperors. But the humans be damned if I'm going to start using their language before ours. They killed the leaders, disposed of the bodies and took their position. In less than a year, the so-called Cold War was over. Then we proceeded to make the same to the other countries, and so on. We have the entire species eating from our hands. Unfortunately, a human reporter discovered one of our drones while they had malfunctioned. I failed to replace him on time. But when we did, we started using their replacement to write news so unbelievable that every credential the reporter had was destroyed. It was a false alarm, but some humans already heard of the reptiloids and started to become part of their culture. We could not allow another mistake like that to take place. So we started to replace important members of the press to gain total information control. And then we realized we could use them to terraform the planet and make them destroy themselves while doing so. We used the press to discourage scientific papers related to global warming and increased the energy dependency of the race to classifying military technology. The planet was 10 degrees Celsius too cold for us, but our ancestors would help us raise the temperature again. We made cults, making people believe that climate crisis was an invention to make their lives worse. We put hundreds of loopholes in climate correction programs so that they benefited people who polluted with CO2. We started an economy based on computers making useless calculations, so they had to consume more energy. We defunded scientific projects dedicated to renewable energies, while granting subsidies to oil mining companies that we possessed. But still, we underestimated them. Their incredible fragmented political structure made it impossible to reach every part of society. The scientists and engineers advanced renewable energy, even without funding. Their rapid growth in technology was not as fast as anticipated. We calculated that even with that, the damage was irreversible for them, and they were doomed. But before they faced extinction, they started to develop terraforming technologies without leaving their planet. Carbon scrubbers took CO2 from the atmosphere, and they stored it underground. 
They started dumping chemicals into the air and using submarines in the poles to rebuild the ice layer to cool the planet. Even the civilians were planting trees in their spare time. This was a stopgap measure, but with the increase of their knowledge and renewable energy, the global warming was receding. Today, a drone was destroyed. Not by accident. They knew. We were no longer invisible. We cannot cover this. I am Swalgrunra, leader of the Skrull, or as the humans call us, the Velociraptors. I am writing this as my memoirs in a hope that they survive me, and our voyage on the void is not forgotten. I don't know which will be the future of our race, but if there is another race out there, hear my message. Do not underestimate the humans. End of story. Alrighty, that's it for this week's narration. Now on to next week's word prompt. As I mentioned earlier, there's going to be two, two, yes, two ways of doing it. No, no, that's not me stuttering. That's just me reaching a higher score on counting for this year. Congratulations, me. The first method, the new method this week, will be an SCP prompt. Oh, goody. Everybody is thrilled about Secure, Contain, Protect. If you don't know what that is, there are various YouTube channels that go in-depth into the SCP and the individual stories. But what I plan to do is, well, lack of a better word, we're going to bastardize the thing. What I'm going to do, what I wish to do, what I hope to do, is to give out an SCP, and we convert it into an HFY SCP, or a Humans or Space Orcs SCP, or the Humans or Space Elves SCP, you know, space. So what we do on my channel, just take the SCP, plonk it in one of those universes, and write a story about it. Well, interesting stuff, hmm. Obviously, this will be non-canon and whatever. In the description down below and in the information thingamabobby somewhere on the screen, there will be a link to my second channel, where I do the basic reading for this SCP. This week's SCP is 88, SCP-088. So there is a link to me reading that SCP on the other channel. It was conveniently prepared earlier, kinda like I had a bit of a plan this week. Maybe. <laughs> Me? Plan? Never. Never, I tell you! Anyways, give that SCP a listen, or a read, and see if you can slap it into space and make an interesting story about it. Like I said, doesn't have to be HFY, doesn't have to actually really be any particular type of space story, but rah rah shoot shoot pew pew pretty much does well on this channel. The one bonus for this specific writing prompt is that you'll be able to choose next week's SCP. Well, you can give me three choices and I'll pick one of them. If an SCP story doesn't win this week, then I'll choose another and we'll do this again next week. Now, on to the dice. As you can very well tell, I've plunked a dice on the screen. Hopefully much more professional looking than last week. A scuffed build for a scuffed channel. But it gets the job done if you know what I mean. A bit of duct tape, a bit of glue, and I stole my wife's camera. But we won't tell her that. I mean, <laughs> what does she need to know that for? Quick reminder, I take ten dice from the container, shake them up, throw them out, and you can use five of them for your story. This week's story dice, reading from left to right, top to bottom, is number one, Lighthouse. Number two, Pyramid. Number three, Television. Number four, Mad Scientist. Number five, Switch. Number 6, Bite. Number 7, Trapdoor. Number 8, Confused. Number 9, Cyborg. Number 10, Stake a Claim. Right, so those are your 10 dice, and I'll list them down below as well to make life a bit easier. Those are my interpretations of these dice, so you can use similar interpretations for your stories. Remember, only 5 dice. Just a recap of the general rules. Just keep to the TOS for YouTube and Terms of Service and YouTube guidelines and all of that stuff as best you can. You can use my previous stories as a guideline for what can and can't be done. The story shouldn't be longer than 2,000 words, should be dropped into the comment section below this video. And this event will end next Friday at 23.59.59 59 GMT plus 2. 
Just remember that the internet is the internet and does what the internet does. People will most likely comment on your work and some of which might not be the most positive. If you cannot handle that, then I advise that you do not post. However, you can still use this as a personal writing prompt to help you along. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one. Good luck with the writing, and I will see you all later. Cheers.